where to start. And so, um, or people say they don't know where to start, but I actually think that people don't know, they don't know. <laughs> uh, when I first started selling on Etsy, I didn't even have an internet connection. And I didn't have, uh, at one point, I couldn't afford ink for uh, my printer. So I would, I would actually go down to the unemployment office and print up my shipping labels. Now you can't do this because you never want to sign into um, in another IP address with your Etsy. But I used to actually go to the unemployment office and put my unemployment badge on and go in and talk to my customers. Come on in. You can come in. Come on in. <laughs> um, you can talk to your customers. You know, I, I would go in and talk to my customers. I would print my shipping labels. I would do all this, you know, Etsy stuff, and then I would just leave. I would just quietly go in and kind of hawk around <laughs> the printer and then run off with my labels. And so um, the, I, I really truly think that, you know, it, it's, a, it's about turning your, your shoulds into musts, like what you should do and then what you must do. So it's definitely a life change. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. But I think now it's easier than ever because you know that there are some major changes taking place that are making it um, extremely lucrative. So, one of those big changes is Etsy checkout. So up until now, for a decade, only Etsy members have been able to check out on Etsy or buy things on Etsy. So there was always this huge gap between you and your customers that you had to have them sign up. They had to go you know, add all these different things. They had to get their accounts approved. You had to do all this different stuff. Whereas now they can just check out as a guest. They can check out with PayPal. When it comes to advertising on Facebook, you're always going to see a lot more PayPal checkouts than you're going to see anything else because people feel safe using PayPal, and they should, you know, it's clear that it's safe. But they just feel better than just entering in their credit card number and stuff like that. So that is really awesome. And another little trick that the Etsy guest checkout does is that if you do have like the bargain shoppers that are coming through or people who are not familiar with Etsy, they're gonna go ahead and just check out as a guest and they're not gonna, if, if, if let's say you have a 10 day processing time because you're making something and it takes you, maybe the glue has to cure or dry and you've got somebody who wants their item in three days because they didn't read your processing times because they're new to Etsy, they're not going to be able to leave you some bad review because they didn't follow directions. So that is a really awesome thing. And um, the, new, the new thing that's really awesome just in the past month has been the sales and coupon platforms. We've always been able to offer coupon codes and stuff like that, but now they have sales. So if you have an item, like for a lot of us, we would go in and continuously change our prices all the time and like network yeah bulk editing tool and so like we're bulk editing our prices you know every time we want to have a sale and then you know you, you pe the people that are buying from you don't really see the value of your item because they're not saying that they're getting it you know at a, at a cheaper price and so the sales platform is something that you could really really utilize especially if you if you um, don't want to offer returns but you don't want to say that you don't offer returns in your store, you can just run sales all the time and um, that kind of locks out your return policy. Because right now, if you don't accept returns, you cannot sell in the United Kingdom. So you need to be able to stop people from giving you the returns or doing what's called the DUI, where they're done using it, you know, they send your stuff back to you that you like put your blood, sweat, and tears into. So that is gonna be very helpful. <laughs> and. Um, I'm doing that, and that's just a little trick. You know, I troll the uh, um, Etsy seller Facebook page all the time, just like serial helping people, like constantly, really annoyingly. And so um, I'm always coming up with different ideas and different ways because people have a lot of problems on there, and so I try to solve them. So um, that's gonna be that's gonna be really cool. And then more recently, so the biggest change that happened that a lot of people thought was very negative on Etsy was in February, everybody shops crashed a lot of people most people that have shops on etsy were like freaking out when february came because everybody's sales plummeted right when they're supposed to really be picking back up you know christmas there's a lull and then february picks back up depending on what you sell and so but people that were like specializing in valentine's day stuff you know weren't having the success that they had the years before and nobody could figure out why if you go onto youtube and you find a bunch of videos you're going to find a, a bunch of out of date information if you apply it to your shop it will totally take your shop and it'll take you another week to build up an index with google so that is um that that's something that happened was good but a lot of people do not understand it so what happened was google implemented something called rank brain 
Now, Rank Brain is an artificial intelligence. You know, there are two artificial intelligences that pretty much run the internet, and that is the Facebook artificial intelligence and Rank Brain. So, Rank Brain is Google. Google owns everything now. YouTube, they own pretty much everything. So, that artificial intelligence runs at about a 13-year-old capacity. So, when you're doing your sales and you're doing your marketing, it runs on emotions. So now if you use negative, like if you tell somebody don't do something in your description, instead of telling them what to do and you tell them not what not to do, it will pick it up as being negative. If you use an exclamation point, it will pick it up as being negative. So, and it, and it recognizes emotional words. Like if you say you're gonna be dazzling in it or someone's gonna feel wonderful or things like this, then it picks up these words. So there's all these different algorithms now that Google's using, and this applies around, like across the board. You cannot get away from it. Up until now, Etsy has had its own environment, which has been uh, for us that do like a professional <laughs> internet sales a pain in the butt because we were not able to optimize it, the, you know, as as good as you could optimize it. You could do Etsy SEO, but it didn't really apply to your Google SEO, and that is why for so long you've been able to alter your pattern listings on your Powered by Etsy website, which hopefully everybody's using a Powered by Etsy, web, Etsy website or something similar. Um, but you weren't able, you were, you were actually able to, um, to change those listings separately for Google, but now everything is the same, it's all streamlined, which is good, but it was really frustrating. I was one of those people that was like freaking out because I didn't know what was happening, and I was going online, and and taking all this bad advice, and um, and I'll tell you in a second, we'll get to where, where I really learned and figured out how to hack the system and, and run this AI. Basically, it's like getting the attention of a 13-year-old. Of a it's really easy if you have a 13-year-old who is really into gaming to get that 13-year-old's attention. We're not trying to get them to clean house, we're just trying to get them to buy things, you know? So, um, and the other thing was with Etsy, you got like, I, I went to this boutique today, Lindsay and I went to the boutique, and there were an amazing artists everywhere. It was so cool. Everybody worked from home, and everybody was, well, I would say like 80% probably, right? 80% was um, handmade. So, I was talking to everybody, and the one thing that it's difficult to explain to people, but it's so important that they understand. So I explain it in many different ways. The riches are in the niches, okay? If you sell bracelets, you're not gonna be able to have a bracelet store. They're, you're not gonna do that. You're gonna have to find you know, a niche. So you say you sell bracelets, well then you're gonna sell bracelets to animal lovers, and you're gonna niche out the animal lover. That way you can target that audience. Otherwise, you're gonna get lost in a sea where, you know, if you uh, <coughs> click funnels, um, Russell Brunson and, and all these different people talk about the red waters and the blue waters. And you get a good idea and you get in the waters and it's these clear blue waters and it's sailing the whole time and you're stoked and you're, and you're making the money and there's not a lot of competition. And then somebody sees what you're doing and then they come over into your waters and it's like a shark frenzy and the waters turn red. So you, you want to stay out of the red waters and get into the, you know, the niche more, the more niche type of stuff. So let's say you did, you know, bracelets that were, you know, for animal lovers, then you would niche out like pugs or Labradors or something that people collect, you know, stuff like that. So, and that's how you really market because you're not going to be able to run a Facebook ad or find people on YouTube to come to your store if you're just, you're, you're throwing out this huge blanket of bracelets, it would cost you $100,000 to get enough sales to, you know, to even dent anything. So that's not, you would not be able to do that. So that's another thing is the, the niche. And I have the niche video is if you signed in obviously to the, the 22 Social Gateway on my, on my Facebook page, there's a niche video. It says Pinterest and it says niche vid and you can watch that niche vid. It's 100 niches that sell on the internet. And so I'm like, just to name off a few, like anything rave or electronic dance music EDM related is huge on Etsy. Like the, the rave and festival community is huge on Etsy. The wedding community is huge on Etsy. Animal lovers, huge on Etsy. And these are, if they're niching out and they're good on Etsy, they're good everywhere. So if you're like, there's like, if you're doing Shopify or ClickFunnels or one of these other like, handmade sites or something that I will mention, then you know you can really use this anywhere. I always tell everybody that I do exclusively Etsy 
And I'll tell you why, because I've been researching for a long time about other people who uh, have branched out and done a lot of other stuff. And not only does it put you in danger of having too much business coming in, too much you know, workflow, but also um, Etsy likes you a lot more if you're exclusively Etsy. I'll just say that. So sales funnels. This is like the big one. Everybody wants to know about sales funnels. That's it. Because the wave of the future on the internet is sales funnels. The, S the SEO is sort of dicey and it hit and miss now. But the sales funnels is the way to go. And you see the sales funnels like everywhere. So what is a sales funnel? So what is a sales funnel? So a sales funnel, it's a funnel. It goes like this. <laughs> people go on the inside of it and then the money comes out the bottom. And this is pretty much, you know, if 100 people go into the top, it would be good if 30 people at least checked out, you know, at the end of the funnel. So every funnel that, nearly every funnel that I do starts with YouTube. And I just told you why, because Google owns YouTube. And videos are what the basic are running the internet right now. So if you have the same ad I was telling somebody at the boutique, you know, I have ads that I've done that, I, it's the same exact ad, I just duplicated it, I've given it the same amount of money, but one had a video and one had a photo. The one that had a video got 30,000 hits, and I made, I won't say how much money I made, I made a lot of money. And then on the other one, it had like 4,000. So that kind of gives you an idea of the difference between um, the videos and the pictures. It's a big deal, it's a really big difference. Um, and um, people just like pictures, you know? And um, I'll get into my, um, after this, after we get through this list, I'm gonna get into my stamp analogy. Um, I'll tell you about <laughs> what I learned about stamps and, and how, to, how to build trust and confidence on the internet. So the sales funnel would start like, you know, it starts with YouTube and we'll get into all this and it goes from YouTube, you've got the person there, they've, they've searched the, how to do whatever it is or, or, you know, whatever you're selling, you know, where do I find this or that, even if they search it on Google, the, your YouTube video is going to come up. It doesn't have to be you in the video, it can be a slideshow of what you sell, it can be pictures of your workspace, it can be pictures of your um, people with whatever you sell that they've sent you, it could just be this. So they know that you're a real person and that you make these things and that you know you're you're following through with what you're doing and from there on in your description you know in every everywhere even in your comments i'll even go in my comments and just say hello to everybody and put my uh, link sometimes but you're always gonna have a link in the description and the name you know of your youtube channel should really always be your website url or even like if you have an etsy it's you know such and such and such at you know etsy.etsy.com or .com.etsy or whatever whatever the Etsy URL is it changes all the time. So like I said, you should use the pattern URL because it's, it, you can do it all through Etsy and then you have your own website URL. You don't have to mess around with all this like dot dot dot. So and then the list hacking and building inspiration is really funny because um, I just came up with the building inspiration today. So I was like, well. I don't want to. I don't want to rip off of other people. Call, but we've been doing it for a long time. Those of us who did this, like when I first started doing aprons, you know, I went to like a the only other person that was making aprons for Williams and Sonoma. They weren't rockabilly sexy aprons, but I basically modeled everything that she was doing. And um, but I thought, you know, what, really what I was doing was building inspiration. You know, I already knew what I wanted to do, but I needed to know what worked. And so I was able to just go around. If you can find somebody who's doing something similar, like don't try to reinvent the wheel. Try to do something. You know, make it your own. You can make it your own and do like that. But you can still say, you know, what are they doing? How are they doing it? Who are they targeting? I mean, that's that's why when you go to someone's listing, you can see on the bottom that they have their keywords down there and what keywords relate to their listing. And that is so that the you know it's a community it's a community uh, resource. So going over uh, YouTube, I want to go over YouTube because uh, this is right now the holy grail of the internet. You cannot get away from it, and it is awesome. So my stamp analogy. Um, I have had a sewing business in town for uh, off and on for many years, and. Um, I learned very quickly that everybody needs to pay me up front because people's priorities change over time and then you end up with all these clothes that you've sewn and you haven't been paid for or maybe they paid half and they feel fine about that and then I can tell you I have two, I, at one point I had two boxes of clothes that were paid, actually paid. So if people will leave that much clothing in your shop paid for, they will definitely leave it there unpaid. So I learned I had to start charging people up front. 
and I, I had a hard time at first getting people to trust me enough to pay me up front. And um, a lot of people would say, well, I, you know, I find people, you know, have more incentive if you pay them afterwards. And, and I would just say, well, I, that's not me, <laughs> you know. And so, but I had a hard time getting people to trust me up to, to pay me up front and then know if it's a wedding thing, you know, they're like a wedding, so there's no do-overs, you can't, you cannot mess it up. And so, I, how do I get them to trust me? And the way I got, I figured it out uh, by accident and it was with just a little Vistaprint stamp. And I bought this stamp because it was free with my, you know, it was like free offers in Vistaprint. So I got this stamp with Vistaprint. The stamp is like 10 years old, it still works. And, um, and I started stamping people's receipts. Even though I was giving them a receipt and they had already paid and the receipt was an indication that they had already paid, I just found that when I stamped the receipt, I noticed that, I mean, I've been like, people know I've been a Tony Robbins life coach, so I did the Master University when I was like 22. So the world is, a, I, inter, I searched my inner web of psychology, and, you, and once you do that, you cannot help but notice other people's psychological interactions and physiology. And so I noticed when I would stamp this stamp that people's shoulders would go down. And after I noticed this enough times, I started trying it different ways. Will I stamp it here? Or how about I stamp it at the end? Stamp it right before I say goodbye? Stamp it soft? Stamp it hard? You know, <laughs> how do these people respond? And once I got really good at it, it was sort of like people would be nervous. They're nervous already because they're weddings. So they would be nervous, and I would stamp, and then their shoulders would go down. And I thought, I need to get people to pay me up front on the internet because that is the way internet sales go. How do I get people to trust me on the internet the way I've gotten them to trust me? my local shop, and I found that it was YouTube. Like, your face is your stamp. <laughs> you're, you're hopefully m moving and making noise is the best. If you if you have enough, uh, like, it's very difficult at first because you're talking to yourself when you first get on YouTube. It's crazy. You're like, this is so weird. So you have to find your voice and get comfortable. But people will appreciate your authenticity. You know, right now in 2017, going into 18, is a lot of, like, be your be your authentic self and stuff like that. So people are really liking, you know, like you're a real person and you're you're you care enough about this to do this video and introduce yourself and they feel like they know you. So when everybody's shops were crashing and they weren't making any money, I still was making money. And the change had been going on a lot longer than I had even noticed because I had been, of course, rocking out with a rock band and just working once a week and I didn't notice anything going on as long as the money was coming in at a certain amount. I noticed it was going down, but I just figured I'm just, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing the best, the best job on the SEO and stuff like that. But that, that really wasn't it. it um, the reason I still had some money coming in, it would have been zero if I hadn't done this. So I had, a, like a year ago, opened my YouTube channel, and I, just because I thought it would be the right thing to do, <laughs> named the YouTube channel after my URL, which I later found out makes it rank more on Google. And it also gave people an opportunity just to copy and paste my URL no matter what. They could go into my description, they could go anywhere. So I still had money coming in, and so when you go to your Etsy stats and you look, my direct traffic was, through the roof. And so I'm going like, what, what's up with the, where is this direct traffic coming from? Where are people getting my website? And then I realized it was from YouTube. Um, and so that, that became where I started to kind of hone in. And I did, um, so if you're, doing, if you're doing YouTube and you're selling online, it doesn't matter what you're selling, Etsy is so far behind. Like people on Shopify, they're doing unboxing videos. They're doing all this different stuff. They're, they're doing all this different marketing. I mean, they've taken big time, you know, multi thousands dollar, thousands of dollars in internet courses to learn how to do this Shopify thing. You know, all these different, different companies. And so Etsy is just getting on board. So it's so even like right now, what you're learning is really cutting edge information. Some of it, I I, I, I learn it every day. So it's it's like it's changing all the time. But the YouTube direct traffic is the way to go. And so what, what you do, you go on, like I said, you, you have your URL, is your, your URL is your name, and your first one is just show your, like I said, if you're uncomfortable, you just do a slideshow, show where you work. If you have a favorite thing that you use, a tool, you'll show your tool. You do that in your shop updates as well. You link your listing that you use that specific tool or material for, and you just keep your presence going non-stop. You can schedule videos now. So, so let's say you're like on a roll one day, you do like five videos. You can schedule those videos to come out once a week 
and your audience, you'll build, you'll start building that audience. And you'll take those videos, those from, from that very top tier of your sales funnel, the next step is that link. So basically what you're trying to get people to do is leave YouTube and go to wherever you want them to go to. And so when once they click that link, now depending on what your goal is, you, it, it might take them directly to the listing. Like if the if it's like if I do one and it's for wedding stuff, it's gonna be a lot of different stuff. It's gonna take them to a section of my store that's wedding items. Okay? And then if I do, like I sell the a couple of other different items, like toilet you weird stuff. Um, if I sell that stuff, then it's gonna take it directly to the item because I don't want people getting lost in my store. I don't want them clicking around and because what you want to do is funnel them. You don't want them to leave and go out to the funnel because people, if they have about a three second attention span on the internet. If they get confused for longer than three seconds, they're usually out of there, okay? So unless you have a super, super, super in demand type thing, it's not gonna happen. So whether uh, we have uh, like, like the 22 social and a lot of the people that um, are hearing about me internationally are, are coming from YouTube because I linked in my 22 social which took them to a gateway page which told them about this event so then they got into the school because this event was free in the school so you see how, so everybody that's here from my iPhone, you hear it, here you are. <laughs> so that's where we're at with the YouTube. So. Going from there, once you have you know whatever you're selling set up in, in your in your shop, wherever that your platform, that's when you would start doing this. And you do an unboxing. If it's something that you're selling, like I know I have Nadia's here, she's gonna do like astrology and tarot card reading. So what you could do on YouTube, you can sell your psychic advice, your astrology readings, like anything you can sell it. Just the best. If it's yours. And so um, so you could sell like she could sell the astrology readings. Or even if she did like the 22 social, I was really recommending that she do two social because it's like you could just take a Facebook page and run an app on your Facebook page that turn push that out. And once it starts to index and people start to you know use a good get a good picture, you know, so permission to use content, um, and you know make it your own, but offer that video and then post it to Facebook. So what's interesting about Facebook? is once you have paid for videos on your Facebook page, like so say I told you I had one of the videos had 30 or 40,000, too much for last time I checked, 30 or 40,000 people that had clicked on it. So that is 30,000 people that now, because I paid all that money to have them click on my video ads on Facebook, from now on, they're gonna see my videos. Have you ever been on Facebook and then an ad pops up and you're like, I have this ad blocker, why is the ad showing up? Because you have clicked on that sponsor's videos before and now they have permission you have opened the door on Facebook for them to now send you ads until you shut them off so once you've bought a big video ad and ran it on Facebook after that it's just a matter of just continuing with it and just keep putting the videos out there because they're still gonna reach you even though you don't have to throw any money at them but but the YouTube just doing this alone will bring people you can funnel people into your Facebook page like a, a lot of people, uh, depends on what forum or platform you're using, you're not able to collect emails um, because the email list belongs to the platform holder, meaning Amazon Handmade or Made It Myself or Etsy or one of these things. So sometimes people like to funnel people to get your, your email list. They'll funnel from YouTube to the Facebook where they sign up by, or do you get an email or lead generation so they get their email. And then from there, they're gonna go into the, the, the Etsy. So that way, if you wanna use an email list, you have permission to use your email, you have never used it on Etsy, they gave it to you willingly. And that is really where you're gonna be like retargeting. Um, there's a girl on YouTube called um, Starla. You can check her out, she's got some pretty good videos about that kind of stuff. So do you guys have any questions about YouTube? Any questions? Do you have questions? Did I cover a lot? <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay, so um, that is what I recommend doing. Like I said, once you're in the, um, the, the school, once you've gone through the gateway and you're in the school, then from then on, you can ask me questions if you get stumped or left something out or you say, hey, wasn't that, you know, I'm happy to help as long as you've gone through all of the video courses. <laughs> I'm, good. I'm happy to help. My husband just asked me if I would sit down and help him with his Etsy, and I was like, not until you take my courses. He was like, oh my gosh, I can take your courses. <laughs> so um, so we have the niche video, which is your five things video that you wanna do. 
And then you want your name to have in your URL, your URL, your description needs to have the SEO has the same SEO that I talked about with the Etsy, where it's emotional, it has descriptive words, um, it has a, a you know your it's like really sales mini. You want it to be, you want it to flow. You don't want a keyword cram like people used to put a bunch of keywords and stuff like that. Google will completely ignore you if you do that now. If you if you try to keyword cram and just pass it right back up, that's not working anymore. So don't do that. Now, the fourth thing that I have on here is really important is right now live videos are like, what's going on? So if you have an audience, and I recommend anybody reading Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. I read it twice, I did it second time with a workbook. Russell, why don't you put that you need a workbook in the beginning of the book? So I had to do it a second time with the workbook. And um, so that has a lot of stuff about um, how to go live. And it even does a script for you. If you want to do a script, you can do a script through the book and it will give you everything. So you can build an audience and, and the, the right audience. So I would recommend reading that book. I don't want to go into it too much. But going live, when people are scrolling down and they're looking for something and they see that red live now icon next to your video, they're going to click that video before any other video. So that is what you want to be doing is going live. You can go live once a day. That's awesome. I, I used to go live every day. That is a lot of work. But once you've done it, you have like 200 videos or something, it'll be worth it. But I say once a week is good. Once a week is good. And then you can link your live video in Facebook. If you have a big Facebook following, you definitely want to go live on Facebook for sure as well. And then, like I said, you always want to have your Facebook link, your Etsy link, everything, everything you could possibly put in there. So, and then when you get done with that video, that is when you take it. So, a lot of people are creating ads on Facebook and they're not, you just, like I had somebody said they had an event and they, and I said, well, why don't you help me with my Facebook? Well, we're, we ran a bunch of Facebook ads. And I said, well, how many people showed up? Well, none. Well, then you didn't run, you didn't run Facebook ads. You're just like playing around. <laughs> you know, those aren't, uh, that's not good advertising. You know, you know, make something wrong. So, uh, a lot of people are creating ads and they don't know how to create the ads. And so what you need to do is you need to boost your posts. And when you go in, you want to target your audience to where it's target, like you hone it in. You don't want to be hitting like millions of people. You could, if you're starting out like this, I don't see how you could ever afford that. So you want to keep it really simple, boost the post. My favorite ad to run on Facebook is send, when you target your audience, my friends and their friends. That's what I do, and that's been my most successful campaign after I've you know, had lots of people come in and liking the page and I'm hitting people and um, all of them, you know, lots of friends on my personal one. Then, so you can actually send that target your friends and then all of their friends. So if you have friends that have a lot of friends and your ads are just like blasting out and then people are liking and sharing and clicking and if you do a, if you do a funny ad, it's gonna work really well. If you can find a way to add humor into your ad on Facebook, it's really, really good. Or if you can find a way to do like a pain-based advertisement, like a, if you could do like a pain-based product, you know, that this is a pain and we're gonna help you, that's a really good thing to do as well. And if you can combine pain and humor, golden. I think everybody knows that. <laughs> so thank you guys very much. Um, it is eight o'clock. I'm gonna take just some questions. Um, are there any questions popping up? Do you have some questions? I don't know if Bianca's still awake or not. <laughs> I do. I have okay. I'm like really new to this. What is an SEO? Could so S, like thank a... you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So SEO is search engine optimization. So you have the environment that is the internet going on. You know, it's its own, it's its own environment. And then you have your little corner, your little shop in that environment. So your shop is going to, when you give it words to use, it then takes these words from these three places and it puts them out in an index. So Google is constantly scouring the internet to find keywords that match its keywords to the link up customers with the products that they need. So that is why, um, like people used to do these favorite-thons on Etsy and they'll say like if you're on the Etsy seller page, you'd be like favorite-thons and I think they're finally kind of dying down. But the favorite-thons used to kill people's pages because if, People are coming onto your page and favoriting your items. Like I said, on your funnel, at the top, the YouTube, if they're not going directly to your item, you should get favorites. And at least 20% of those favorites should turn into conversions. They should convert to sales. So if, if you were to have all these people coming onto your site and favoriting all your items because you're bored during the day, I don't know, and then if you want to do that or someone told you it would work, I don't know, Basically, this is what Google's gonna say.
it. Everybody keeps visiting this person's store and nobody wants anything. Forget it. And they will pass up your store for a while, for a good week after you fix it. So it takes about a week to index. So an indexing it is when Google is out there matching up your SEO with their guidelines, with, with all of their environment. So like I said, 13 year old intelligence, artificial intelligence. And so the Google artificial intelligence and the uh, Facebook artificial intelligence are um, some of the most sophisticated AIs on the planet. Um, you could, we could look into it. The, um, it's a funny fact that the Facebook um, chatbots uh, created their own language. It was, they had to shut it down. It's that sophisticated. So if you can, another thing, like I said, the friends of the friends, another thing is um, to let Facebook choose your audience for you. If you have a page and it asks you, hey, we're gonna offer $35 a month to find your audience for you, let them do it, because they, they know best that artificial intelligence really works. So as, that's what SEO is. So your SEO on your Etsy shop, it needs to be, I have the videos on there. My SEO friend is Marmalade, and if you go to Marmalade, they, they interviewed me back in August, that came out in September, and they did almost a two hour interview, I think it was with me, and I give away a ton of information in this video, because they're just like racking my, like just picking my brain, asking me tons of questions. And um, so there's a lot of information in that, but, but SEO is tricky because, um, Etsy is by far the easiest platform to use, but because it's so easy, it's really simple. So that you're not allowed to really, that's one of the new features that they just rolled out the other day was the um, long tail keywords. So it's not that you can use long tail keywords now in Etsy. So tail keywords, a short tail keyword is Etsy SEO. That would be a short keyword. Um, selling on Etsy would be a short keyword. How? Do I learn how to sell on Etsy platform would be a long tail keyword. Uh, how do I learn how to sell on Etsy making bracelets? That would be a long tail keyword. And most people, so if you do the short tail keywords, you're gonna end up in the red oceans where everybody's using those short tail keywords. But if you use the long keywords, you're gonna be able to hone in on people that are specifically looking for what you're doing. And on YouTube, that's really good. So on Marmalade, Marmalade's very interesting because when you when you do a storm search, I, I it took me like less than five minutes to sign up for the full version of Marmalade, so I wouldn't even waste the time, just do it. Because you can do a storm, and then on storm, you can add in whatever you're selling, and then it's gonna give you everything. How competitive is it? how much engagement is there, what the average price is, and when it gives you all of your keywords, they're gonna all fit in the SE, SEO keyword because you're only allowed, um, I might be like a dozen characters, but that I haven't looked at how many characters, there's not very many characters, and it's very frustrating if you're trying to figure out keywords for an item, and every time you punch in your keywords, or maybe like I, have, I sell stuff with rhinestones, and that's a lot of letters, and so I can't get everything in there. And so um, now they've got it to where if you, if you like they like Marmalade did it like this: silver starfish necklace. So if you're gonna sell a silver starfish necklace, if you were, you could put silver starfish necklace in the title, but if you put in keywords silver necklace. It's not gonna pick it up. You, you could do starfish necklace because in the title, starfish, silver, starfish necklace. So that is gonna work. So that's a new thing that Etsy has rolled out. So you can do the SEO, you can do long tail keywords now, which is really, really cool because they were not doing that before. And sometimes you're just running out of keywords. You just need to add more tags. And um, so um, that, I recommend anybody use Marmalade because like I said, that was one of the most frustrating things for me it used to be Thinking that I had a like, you know, oh that's an awesome keyword and you get in there and it doesn't fit. So and they're gonna they're gonna give you so really interesting SEO with Marmalade. Um, when you know I first started I sold these aprons. That's one of the first places I sold aprons was T10 Cafe. And um, and so well a while back it just kind of died off and I wasn't really wanting to sell them anyways, but I still used to sell some like pretty expensive. And so I just haven't sold one in a long time and I just didn't care. And uh, I was like, that's fine, I'm not doing that. But I still had them for sale and I, I did notice, you know? And so when I started doing the marmalade, I just thought, I'm gonna look up aprons, you know, I'll look it up. So the, my UK people like this, uh, will think this is interesting. So I found out that the cute, roughly apron style that I was selling had been niched out. Someone had carved it out in a niche in Europe and they had started mainstream calling apes pinafores. <laughs> so I didn't even know that that existed, but the apron that Alice in Wonderland always wears and Strawberry Shortcake are called pinafores. 
So as soon as I added pinafores to my listings, it literally, I sold, I sold it, it didn't take a week to index, it just took a few days, and they started selling again. So it was kind of just interesting, and we talked about it on the Marmalade interview, how interesting that was, because Marmalade has international keywords, so if you're selling a lot to the United Kingdom, and different places like that, then you're, you're gonna wanna know what other people in other countries are calling your item, because they have so many different words. So that is very useful. So that that would be, but I would say if you guys can, uh, you know sign up for um, sign up for Marmalade and just try out the, because I use Marmalade for everything. I was telling them like I use it for whatever I sell. I'll check it out because it's so much information. They have so much data, so data collection going in, and then they send out the the weekly emails. So you get weekly high engagement emails. Like I had an item that was selling, and I had no idea what it was selling. I hadn't optimized it yet. Like I said, I have uh, almost 200 listings, and so I can only optimize so many at a time. You have to do it all the time. And so um, I could not figure out why this wedding veil was selling, and it was because I had the word dainty in the um, in the item listing, and it just so happened that over the last couple of months, the word dainty was a high engagement keyword. So. Um, what do you think I did after that? I put dainty in my my description, and I put dainty in the tags, <laughs> and then I sold like several more since then. So, so we, we, you kind of can see what's going on, especially with the, with the emails. Really cool. So I'm gonna I'm wrapping up. I know everybody um, is uh, the sound of ready to wrap up and everything like that. So, is it, was there, did you understand that? Did I explain the SEO? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you understand, understand it? Once you, once you get into Markley, then you kind of see, you'll understand, you'll be like, oh, okay, okay. And then when you get into the, um, in the, in the lounge, you can go in and watch me do the, the tag where I, I put my tags in in the order and I capitalize them in the order that I want them to. And then when you enter them, you can just copy paste them and put them in your title and then get rid of the ones on the end that you don't want. So, um, so that's really important. But the SEO that Etsy is doing now that I'm teaching you has been this, that's basically the way SEO has been running on everywhere else on the internet, except for the sophisticated artificial intelligence that is now actually reading emotions and stuff like that. So, um, and it just goes much deeper than that. It, it's a, it's a, just a, it's a full-on behavioral program. <laughs> so, um, but like I said, if you can figure out how to use it, it, it'll be way better than the old system. It is. So, I don't know if there's any um, questions popping up on the screens. I don't know how many people we have watching. But so that that I'll just conclude it. Um, if you have if you haven't checked into the 22 Social Gateway, you go to t it's www.22s.com forward slash Etsy Cafe, and that will take you to the direct link. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna extend the sale a couple of days because I had a couple of people that probably are gonna be going through the gateway tomorrow. So it's nine dollars for a couple more days, and it's going to go back up to the sale price, which is thirty-seven. And then after that, it goes back up to the ninety-seven dollars. And you might be thinking that's like a lot of money, but the fact of the matter is, if, if I could tell you that I could make you fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars within the next month, would you give me ninety-seven dollars? Yes, yes, you would. <laughs> it would be worth it. <laughs> you know, even even if even if you, if you made you know five hundred dollars every month for the next twelve months. And you could scale it and everything. Would it be worth $97? Yes, yes, it would be easily worth that much. So um, tell your friends and um, like like me, give me some hearts, give me some love because I need it for my self-esteem. And um, thank you guys so much. And I love you guys. I'm so happy that I get to help everybody do this. It definitely is um, the, the next, uh, the next uh, frontier <laughs> for me. So thank you very much, you guys. Welcome to Lindsay Callahan. She's going to be playing some original songs, and then she's going to be playing some really awesome classic, classic songs that everybody loves. Give it up for Lindsay. I know I wasn't sure how much time I had, but thank you. I wanted to thank Tony and Etsy Cafe for having me tonight, and um, I'll do a couple songs because I know we're running a little um, late on time, so I'm going to do like an original and then. Um, a song that I love to cover all the time, and it's Corinne Bailey. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but it's pretty rough. It's on. Okay, then I'm just gonna jam out a little bit. So, yeah, this first song I do not own the rights to, so I have to say that first yeah. before I do it. <laughs> okay. Don't need to worry. 
Should I have loved you better? No, I 
I should have turned to run I could have pulled the trigger but I stayed alone with gun You know that it's hard for me to let it go But regardless I will use it to grow, don't you Oh, my head. 